Would you start him as your quarterback week one of the regular season? I would start Sam Bradford. Let's make no mistake about it. Sam Bradford will be the starting quarterback for the St. Louis Rams. He was drafted as a guy to come into a franchise to provide some form of stability to an offense that has not been producing on the field. And when you look at the recent success of guys like Joe Flacco and Mark Sanchez, he has to start because these guys have now risen the bar so high for rookie quarterbacks that now people know that it is possible to be a successful college quarterback and move to the NFL and start week one. So you think the days of resting a guy like a Carson Palmer sat out a year or Phillip Rivers, that those days are over? I do think those days are over. Resting a guy was good maybe five, ten years ago, but now with the amount of money these guys are being paid, these guys are, count, are, are being counted on day one. And when you're the number one pick, when you're a former Heisman Trophy winner, you come from some pretty good stock. When you look at the New York Jets and when you look at the Baltimore Ravens, I don't think they waved the white flag at all because when they started Joe Flacco in Baltimore and when they started Mark Sanchez with the Jets, these guys had some pieces in place. They also had a good running game, which St. Louis has, and it was incumbent upon them to show that this pick was ready. And now in all season, these guys are taking reps. He's seeing, he's seeing already blitzes that are coming up the middle that he realizes that he needs to get better on. You know, New England has made a lot of chases, changes on their defensive line, but Vince Wilfork remains a constant. Vince Wilfork is a guy who sets the tone for the New England Patriots. And, when, and if you watch this play, he does the same thing. He's disciplined, but yet he can be an important dominant force in the game. West Welker from the 12. Welker with some room. Welker near midfield. Dragged down from behind by Courtney Roby at the New Orleans 45-yard line. West Welker can definitely move the chain and get the ball going in several different ways. Look at him right here. He sees the field. He's excited that the ball is in his hands, and he gets Tom Brady closer to the goal. Big mistake by Brady with great field position. And after the great punt return by Wes Welker, New England turns the ball over and gives it back to Sean Payton and the offense for the New Orleans Saints. And that's a very dangerous thing. Now momentum has shifted into New Orleans' favor. If you look at the punt return, Wes Welker did an awesome job. Now the Saints have also done a tremendous job by getting the ball back, and now the momentum is in their favor. Let's look back at the interception once again. Okay, if you follow this play, you want to look at Mike McKenzie and what he's doing up there in the line of scrimmage. It appears that he has his guy and he's beaten. But once again, he keeps his eyes on Tom Brady to make the play, as all veterans do. Now, was Brady thinking that Moss was going to flatten it out and come across the middle? It looked like he turned it upfield. Did he throw I, to a spot? I think Mike McKenzie was playing to his advantage in that cover. On a second and six, here's Pierre Thomas. Tackled by Merriweather and McGowan, but not after a gain of 29 and a first down New Orleans. This is an excellent play. Once again, we talked about how those important running yards will be important. Now look at this big run. And look at the dominating play by the offensive line. If you see the offensive line, big number 77, Carl Nix, is, in, is enforcing his will upon a great player in Vince Wilford. And they also blew up the left tackle, Jamon Bushrod, with a key block as well. After one, Patriots with a 7-3 lead, but the Saints are driving here in New Orleans. We're live here on location at Sports Authority in Mount Laurel, New Jersey. I'm joined here today with 14-year NFL veteran Larry Izzo to talk about the NFL's national program, NFL Play 60. Larry, tell me a little bit about the program. Well, with childhood obesity being such an epidemic in this country, one-third of American youth suffering from obesity, and when you factor in the rising health care costs and all the long-term effects that go along with obesity down the road as kids get older, it's in everyone's best interest to do something about it, to take action. What does it say about them? Well, the NFL has always been a leader with issues, and this is a very big issue for our country. And it doesn't surprise me that they've taken the initiative here, and hopefully it will uh, it motivate and inspire others to do the same. Well, this program has clearly motivated the NFL and others to get out in their community and help our younger fans become more active and generate uh, at least 60 minutes per day um, of physical activity. And to find out more information about the NFL Play 60, you can log on to NFLRush.com.